Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Fine, late senior citizen here, greeting these boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this, a brand new day. And remember, no matter who you are, you are valid. Thumbs up for that. It is a little bit late. It is quarter to one. So, at least it's better than it being very, very late. But I've been out walkies, and I've made phone calls, and I've gotten some things done, so at least there's that. This is the one big thing I wanted to talk about. I left a note on the community tab about this while I was leaving a picture of screenshot of the game Xanadu Next. You can't really see it. I talked about it like it was bad because at the time I was really worried about it. There was a cut right there and it was bleeding last night. So I was not worried, but saying, gosh, you know, it hurts. It's probably going to get infected before it finishes healing because it's right in the end of my finger. Well, not the end, but right there. So it's not as bad as I had originally thought. But what happened? I have a pair of scissors, just a little pair of scissors. Cheap, but they're sharp metal. And not just on the cutting edge. The whole metal part of it is just sharp. And I was holding on to the closed scissors body and I didn't realize how tightly I was pressing it and it went boink and it went sideways because I was holding it, you know, handles up here and my fingers holding it together here and it went flat. <clears throat> but while going flat, the outer edges dug into and cut my finger open. I mean, not badly, but it cut me. So, oh boy, <laughs> you gotta love that. One of the other things that I tried to do the other day was something that, as much as I like most of the stuff about the game Heroes of Kalinor, which I have not fully played yet, the thing that really irritates me is it doesn't provide you with a lot of stuff background material wise it gives you the rules of how to do stuff it tells you some tables that you need to roll on but is there a bestiary of creatures no the only thing you have for monsters to fight is an introductory module that has bandits and so bandits are the only monsters on the monster table and the only monster room table is the monster room table with the bandits. On the reference sheet where you have to roll to see what, what a room is, what's in a room, what monsters are in the room, you have to use only what's provided because that's the only thing there. And the monster room? Yeah, the only monster room with the objective is the one provided in the m module that comes with it. There is no table for it. So if you go flipping through the rules, you're going to go, what, what's wrong? Where's this table they're talking about? They don't give you one. If you want to have any other creatures to fight, you're either going to have to try and figure out what's good to fight based on just the bandits they gave you or you're going to have to go buy the other adventures so that you know what other monsters are like so that you can make things that aren't wildly unbalanced. If you don't do that, it's make them up yourself and hopefully you're not going to make them too easy or too hard. And for the monster objective room, yeah, there is no monster objective room aside from the one given in the adventure. You have to make up the adventure, the monster room, based on what they give you. There is nothing else. So make it up yourself and hopefully it's done right. Or buy the adventures and use those and use them as an example as well. I do find that annoying. That's like buying a computer game on Steam and then finding out that 
unless you buy the DLC, it's not really a full game. You know, sure, it's a full game, but there's no diplomacy. You have to apply the diplomacy. There is no real grand strategy. You have to buy the strategy DLC. It's simple. It's basic. It's an actual game that you can play. But if you want to play it and have fun, you need to buy all this other stuff, too. It's not that expensive, and I think it's pretty much worth it. But it is annoying, and I would just thought I would talk about that, because it is something that, again, I took my characters, and I had little bits of the board all put up, and I was using dice for characters, actually, on the little thing, and then I was reading through this, and then I got to the objective, mo monster objective room thing, and then it was like, oh, you don't have it unless it's here. So you can't just make up something on your own on the fly because there's no table for it. So, really tired when I hit that, I just went on to something else. Thumbs up. On that level though, I have also, even though this is a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with adventure stuff, it's still stuff that has to do with making the world a living place. I have mentioned that in my solo RPG setting, with the world of what the Dwelin call Shensha, and on the continent of Karthkog, where the Hulat are, the funerary practices, what you do with the dead uh, when somebody dies, of the Orkani, I have mentioned, they do forest burials, which is where the younger members of the tribe are given uh, special tools and the body, and they go out to a specified area, and they take the body apart so that it's much, much easier for the animals of the forest to eat it. And that is how the Orkani deal with taking care of the dead. The Apani, which there's the Orkani, six and a half feet tall. The Apani, about four and a half feet tall, with the Habani, as tall as we are, right in the middle. But the Apani, to deal with their dead, around their farming communities, there is an area of land where there are growing trees. And when they bury their dead, they plant a sapling on top of that to take nutrients from the dead and grow that way. And so that great copse of trees is where all the dead are. Now the Habani being in the middle, they look at the Arakani and they find that the whole practice of taking the bodies apart like that to be a bit much and dumping the body underneath a tree to be not enough but still, being one of the Hulad that lives on Karthkog, uh, they deal with their dead because they live in more urban type areas. So they, you don't just take a body apart and leave it around the city or you're going to have dangerous animals there dragging body parts all over. Nor is there really an area for a tree copse to be set up because their buildings, urban area stuff. So I figure they're more of the crematorium type thing. Burn up the remains and then leave it up to the survivors with what they want to do with it. And generally it's either, you know, scatter them in water or scatter them on land, because why hang on to them? So I figure that's how they do that, so definitely a thumbs up on that. Past that, I am also working still on just all sorts of various things about that. Like the, how the name of the settlement and the main area that I've got, I've mentioned that's a Nagrat, a Nagrat word. The name Nagrat is the, where the settlement is. The name of the settlement, I can English, I can English, I promise you. But it's an Apani word, so thumbs up for that. I can't remember where I was going with that. I had a point that I was going to make, but then ADHD melted it out of my head. But as I was talking about with my therapist, I have read enough 
online from other people with ADHD that forgetting stuff as you say it and as you do it is exceptionally common with people who have ADHD. I also figure it's gotta be at least part of it from my 25 years of active alcoholism. I didn't destroy my brain or my body entirely or I wouldn't be alive now. I blew a 0.545 on the breathalyzer. There was more ammonia in my body than any of the people who worked there had ever seen in a living body that wasn't on an autopsy table. So I'm amazed and surprised that I survived. But yeah, part of my issues would likely have to be at least part, part. Oh my God. My sincere apologies. At least part of my issues must be due to alcohol related problems. I am sorry I couldn't say that. Oi. And faced with issues, hey, if you could like, comment, share, subscribe, that'd be very, very cool. Make sure to share this video only, of course, with people that you know would like watching an old man yammer on incomprehensible about thoroughly I mean subjects. If you could, that'd be awesome. Definitely a good thing. Yay. And of course, if you have watched this far, oh, holy smokes, what do I have here? If you could write sleepy time into the comments to let both me and the YouTube algorithm know that people actually watch these videos. That would be very, very cool. And if you have watched this far, thank you so very, very much. It is appreciated to no end. My YouTube career has been relative peak and then a slow decline over the years. If I had the strength and mental fortitude to bend and mold myself to the whims of what YouTube wants, I could probably change to some degree. Would I be able to build my channel back up? I don't know. It's hard to say. YouTube has changed a lot. So, but thumbs up. Also, if you're a Patreon patron, thumbs up and thank you. It is greatly appreciated. You have brought me from here, a badly hurting monkey, up to here, just a hurting monkey. It is very appreciated. Being a badly hurting monkey sucks. I was just surviving. Now, I am at least living. And that's better than just sheer survival. Thumbs up, thank you. When you look in the mirror, you're looking at someone who is beautiful, awesome. Ah. You're looking at someone who is beautiful and awesome, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. There, I did it. And of course, if you've left me a comment, I can look at the camera now, and of course, if you've left me a comment, thumbs up and thank you for that as well. I read every one that YouTube shows me. I thumbs up and heart each one that YouTube uh, lets me. I answer as many as my nerve compression will allow. So thumbs up and thank you much. For people that have left comments in the previous day, I only really remember Jesse Koskinen and Floramu. If Floramu is still like watching today, uh, thank you. It was good to see you in the comments again. Uh, if not, then, uh, well, it was still good to see you with Floramu in the comments again. But for others, you know, again, Jesse Koskinen, I think I saw Sir, Sir Schmuckle. And there are a couple other names, so thumbs up. Thank you all. It is greatly appreciated. So 14 minutes in, and I really don't have anything much to say. I have, I have not been able to stop eating bread products again. Ugh. So I've been having trouble staying awake, which is no fun, which also helps to rob my motivation of things. But... Today, I am going to make, well, probably just run through the adventure in the Heroes of Kalinor thing so that I can actually play the thing fully. That'll be cool. Definitely thumbs up on that. And tomorrow, I'll be able to talk about it as well as hopefully maybe play a couple rounds in a video to show people what it's like. Definitely a thumbs up on that. So, until we meet again. You take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is indeed 
a very, very good thing. Ugh, hokey smokes. Oh, and I took a look in my air conditioning unit. Yeah, because it's outside and in the open, yeah, there's a lot of moisture and there's a lot of gnats that are inside of it. So I'm going to try and get some of the mosquito netting on the outside of it as well. It can't stop the, the bugs that are inside of it now, but maybe it'll stop more new ones. The screen on the front works, but it's getting full. Ugh. Nets, air conditioning units, too much fun. At least it's not just a me issue. It's everyone who owns an AC unit. Well, not everyone, but most people who do. Isn't that joyous? The answer is no.